95. Coming up next on Wall Street Warriors. I saw you 507! I screamed sold! I don't want to hear it! I said sold! Hopefully you've been keeping up with the Sanders. We're at $58 a share, so we're about up 16 points. You got profits of about 240000 Today I'm taking a helicopter out to a polo match in the Hamptons. Team Black Watch our victors today. I have a job interview in Paris in two days, and I'm just trying to get there as soon as I can. Hi, darling. Welcome home again. Oh, hi. <laughs> Good afternoon. Is Charles available, please? Lance and I have a lot of fun. There's different ways of getting through the secretaries. How you doing, Tiffany? You know, you gotta flirt with them a little bit, you gotta crack jokes. You sound like you're hot, how old are you? Well, you know I'm just calling to talk to you in the first place. If I was over there, I'd definitely be taking you out. <laughs> Hey, it's Jim, your favorite broker up in New York. Have you been following the Sandus story at all? Exactly, yeah. So they had earnings last Thursday, and um, they actually came out with a great number. The street was expecting 15 cents. They came in at 30. You got profits of about 40%, about 240,000 US. I got more good news for you, man. Hopefully you've been keeping up with the Sandus. I know you're busy as hell, but we're at $58 a share. So we're about up 16 points, and I think you have 3,000 shares with us. Yeah. So, yeah, I just want to touch base with you. Everything's looking good. So your, your account looks very good right now. Absolutely. It's a pleasure speaking with you. Bye-bye. It's just so much easier to call people when your stock's up 16 points. Yeah. <laughs> it's, a, it's a pleasure to talk to them, actually. The way we do business is we introduce ourselves over the phone, so you know it's a very cold relationship starting off. No, I'd love an opportunity to bring you on board, make you some good money in the markets. The one thing that can change that very drastically is if a guy sends you some money and you put him in stock and it goes up like Sandus did. Most of our clients are up about 40% right now. Well, it is now. I don't know how much you sent me, but I turned it into 16. <laughs> and two months ago, they, they, Jim who? You know, oh yeah, you're that guy. Hang on, I got another call. <laughs> you know? But now it's like, you know, we're actually having a relationship with these guys. So it's just been a lot of fun. Talk to everybody, let them know how much they're up. You got in at $45 and change, it's at $57. They have, you know, whatever, a million dollars in the stock. You know, and it goes up 15% in a week. You know, they look at it and they're like, hell yeah. Look at these guys are doing for me. Where are these two southern clowns? Let me give them a call and see what's going on. Hey, I'm packing for Paris today. I'm flying out in just a couple hours. I have a job interview in Paris in two days and I'm just trying to get there as soon as I can. I had to leave SMB. You know, I talked to Mike and Steve. I told them that even though I loved working there, training there, my parents moved back to Paris and they have really insisting on me going out there and giving it a try. Mike understood my reasons and they're really understanding about it. I should get out of here. I have a lead at a structured finance company in Paris. A friend of mine from school heard that they were looking for some junior analysts. I think they like the fact that I speak three languages and that I'm comfortable in France. I'm definitely looking forward to seeing my family again, but it's hard leaving New York because if I do get this job, I, I don't know when I'm coming back. You know, I've been here for seven years now. I went to school here. A lot of my friends live here, so it's, it's definitely gonna be a tough decision to make if I have to stay there. Well, 
weight. Not surprised, right? <laughs> Then taking a helicopter out to a polo match in the Hamptons. The co-owner of Jet One Jets, Louis Satimo, was nice enough to offer to fly me out. <laughs> I think if I need a seatbelt, I have uh, bigger things to worry about, right? summer I uh, rent a place in the Hampton so it's a good way to get out of the city, do some networking with uh, clients of mine and other potential business partners and as well this weekend with my charity I'm running a, uh, a charity raffle to raise money for breast cancer research at uh, the Bridge Hampton Polo Event. So we've got the Bridge Hampton attire on. This is a beautiful way to travel. weeks cotton has come off pretty substantially it was trading up upwards of 65 to 66 cents it's now 60 and a half and a lot of people are attributing it not only to a slightly bigger supply overseas of cotton than was expected but also to the whole rough and tumble that Wall Street's been seeing the last couple of weeks the subprime mortgage market is really having an effect across the board with all the markets it's not been good for a lot of people's pension funds. <laughs> anyway. So right now we're not sure what kind of day we're going to get. We might get a direction out of where we open. You'll find out what kind of day it's going to be early at least. You know, it's excitable. Most openings seem chaotic. It's not always the most erratic time of the day, but it seems like it because you have a bunch of different trades that are explosively all occurring at once. Doug just bought 2,000 bucks of sales of 45. I gotta go. Everybody has to buy what they've gotta buy. Sell 200! Sell 200! And sell what they have to sell on that opening bell. So it's a fanfare of screaming and yelling. Doug, 70 calls! How are you? Half double, deck 63 calls. Coming up next on Wall Street Warriors. And there's Brad in. He's not. All right, I'll give him a call back. Thank you. If you want that million dollar guy, the guy who's 20 million in the market, you won't get to talk to him easily. Well, I mean, it's not, it's not rocket science either. He's in or he's not in. I saw you 507! I screamed sold! I don't want to hear it! I screamed sold at 27. He didn't hear me scream sold and he bid eight. Can't do that.
Right now, uh, we got some ground transportation. I got us a limo to uh, head on over to Bridgehampton Polo at the Jet One Jet Stadium and uh, meet a lot of good people. That's great. That should a be time. a lot of fun. Deck 62 for 10 bid. I don't know what kind of buying on that. We're bouncing hard. First thing this morning, puts were getting bought, and the market held miraculously and then started bouncing back up and that's when the call covering started coming in so there was a lot of call buying 40 bit 40 bit 40 bit 40 bit it's busy as it's been quite some time. This pit has become extremely crowded, so it's tough to hear. 375 There's a lot going on, and it, sometimes you're trying to block out everything to see what's close to you, and sometimes what you're blocking out is what you really need to pay attention to. I was 27 bid for the VEX 72 calls. I screamed sold, and that means that I'm committing to sell whatever he's got in his hand at 27. He didn't hear me scream sold, and he bid eight and started buying eights from people when I was at seven. Can't do that. I screamed sold! I don't want to hear it! I said sold! I think I have a pretty loud voice. I ran over to make perfectly clear that I said sold at seven. He gave me the 500. So they accepted it. There are very few people that would not help you out. The guys that don't usually don't um, get recognized as readily by all the brokers. And these guys, they're amazing. They'll give up their profit just to help you out of an error. 75 call fence. 490. Would be into the, the is Jim available? Uh, good afternoon. Is Brad in? He's not. All right, I'll give him a call back. All right, thank you, ma'am. If you want that million dollar guy, the guy who's 20 million in the market, you won't get to talk to him easily. Well, I mean, it's not, it's not rocket science either. He's in or he's not in. These guys are CEOs. Yeah. You know, a lot of them are CEOs of publicly traded companies. So the secretaries won't let you through. I can't just start saying numbers and his private personal information. Just let him know I'm on the line, please. Their job is to not put all these calls through and waste his time. You're going to have to be very persistent, get to know those secretaries, get past the secretary, then get to the PA. Call them a few times, get to know certain things about them. You know, you call them back, you know. They drop little hints each time. Use their hints against them. You want to be as vague as possible. Uh, is Georgian? Right, I, I understand that, right. It's not a sales call, man, okay? It's really not sales calls. It's really new business, and you're calling to introduce yourself. Once he knows I'm on the line, I'm sure he'll take the call. Thank you. You tell me he has no idea who Richie is. Lance and I have a lot of fun. There's different ways of getting through the secretaries. You know, you got to flirt with them a little bit. You got to crack jokes. You sound like you're hot. How old are you? If I was older, I'd definitely be taking you out. Like, how's your boss treat you? You just try to get the uh, conversation going because they get a lot of these calls every day. Whatever you think you're going to say and you think you're original, they've heard it ten times before. There's some that are pit bulls. You know, we call them the gatekeepers. Good afternoon. Is Charles available, please? He is. Yeah, it's Jim. You just got to try to break the ice a little bit. How you doing, Tiffany? They get to know your voice after a while, and they're like, oh, is this Lance? They're like, yeah, oh, yeah, I only call to talk to you, blah, blah, blah. All day, huh? Well, you know I'm just calling to talk to you in the first place. And eventually, maybe they'll have a good day or something, they'll pass you through to the guy. Any chance we could just talk on the phone, hang out for a little bit, maybe he walks by and you pass me through? For the most part, those girls are tough, man. <laughs> you have a meeting too now? All right. And you promise? <laughs> All right, I'll let you go. I know you're busy. I'll speak to you soon. Thank you. She wasn't really feeling it. <laughs> Lots of times I don't. I'm not, not exactly a ladies' man. She likes to play uh, hard to get, I guess you'd say. It's like 9 a.m. 
parents' time. I'm on my way to my parents' place. I feel okay, I'm not too tired. I'm probably gonna crash in like an hour or two though. Because I haven't really slept. The sky is gray, typical of Paris. It's actually not even that bad because I see patches of blue sky, but I mean, it's typically gray and low and cloudy. I know Paris pretty well. I spent a couple years here growing up before moving back to New York. My parents met in New York and I was born there. And then after seven years living there, we moved to Germany. I went to French school in Germany, so you know we basically spoke French while I was in Germany. And then I moved to Paris. I moved back to New York in 2001 and I spent two years at the French high school in New York, so you know my education is French. But I did go to NYU, and the past four or five years, I've just immersed myself more in an American culture. All my friends are now American, so, you know, I really have a little bit of both cultures in me. Hi, darling, welcome home again. Oh, hi. <laughs> it took me two hours to get from the airport to my parents' house. My job interview is tomorrow, and I haven't slept in like 24 hours. I just can't wait to get some rest. Coming up next on Wall Street Warriors. Lucky you! You're from New Jersey, the finest state in the union, and you can have your local beer right here in Fairfield! Yeah! We're at Cricket Hill Brewery tonight. It's a good place to come and test some free beer. Laetitia, tu as rendez-vous là pour le pour le boulot? Oh uh, ouais. My mom wants to know everything about the interview that's coming up tomorrow, which I didn't even feel like talking about. What's his name? Richard. You don't know? Richard. The market closes at 2.15, and I usually leave pretty soon thereafter. I have been living in New Jersey since birth, but I did take a, a little respite, and I went to college in Vermont, and then I moved back. When I come home from work, this is the first place I go. I come out here and I water and I just love it. It's very therapeutic to me and I think it balances your day out because you're screaming and yelling and jumping around like a lunatic and now you're doing something very calm and it's nice. You go to Europe, you'll come back and tell me how great it was wherever you went. You're gonna have local beers, you have local wine, and I'm saying, lucky you, you're from New Jersey, the finest state in the union, and you can have your local beer right here in Fairfield. Yeah! We're at Cricket Hill Brewery tonight. It's a good place to come and test some free beer. <laughs> The guy in here that owns this brewery is just fantastic. So a bunch of my friends and I came down here tonight just to check out the new brews. It's a really nice way to end your day. This is the beer you should have in your refrigerator. We're in New Jersey. We make the finest stuff in the world. We make Jersey girls. We make Jersey corn. And we make Cricket Hill beer. <laughs> I 
we were running late. We took the helicopter out today, and we actually just barely made it on time to get everything set up before these mobs of people came here. So luckily, we just made it. Today we're doing a raffle with Acorn Charities Group, which is a charity I founded this year. Jessica is my marketing director, and this is our launch event. 100% of all proceeds raised today go to help support people that are fighting cancer. And my mother passed away from cancer when I was six, so I'm very passionate about trying to raise money. This is a bag by Prada. This is Michael Coors. This is BC. And this is a very high net worth crowd. It's an invitation only event. I'm running the only charity here, so these are very good people to be networking with. A lot of them are our business owners, people that we can potentially invest in, people that are potential investors for our fund, just good networking and community involvement in general, which I do a lot of business in this community, so it's uh, very good for my corporate image as well. So good to appear as sends it well up and through for the score of year as I can. We're going to go hand out the trophy to the winners of the uh, Bridgehampton Polo match. I'm um, going with Jet One Jets to present the trophy right now. The team Black Watch are victors today. It was an awesome day today. We've got a whole bunch of stuff to pack back. Have to go meet with a bunch of different clients of mine. We're going to go out for dinner, a whole bunch of us. I have to go take care of some final items with the raffle and charity, and then have to go meet the second crew of people out later tonight. So. Busy night still ahead. Laetitia, tu, tu, tu peux me donner de l'eau, s'il te plaît Tu es fatiguée, non Ouais. Oh là là. Tu peux dormir un petit peu Juste une heure ou deux dans la vie, quoi. Mmh. T'as mis ici de secours I was waiting for my mom to come home all day and I was really happy when she came home and cooked dinner for the whole family. It was good for the four of us to sit down, you know, and just be all together. We talked about how life was in New York. and My mom wanted to know everything about the interview that's coming up tomorrow, which I didn't even feel like talking about because I was just so tired from the flight. Tu as rendez-vous là pour le pour le boulot Oh, uh, ouais. What's his name first? Richard. You don't know Richard. Oh, Richard. Is he an American or a French person? American. He's American. And is, is he working for a big firm or no, what, what is it? his own company. I think it's right. It's a smaller company. Did he post an ad or how did you get no, the... I someone at NYU who gave me his email address because they told me he was looking for someone in Paris. So I said in my resume, no, he wants to meet me. Since so you sent him an email, you said you, you were looking for a job in Paris? Yeah. Oh, great. That's good news. Et qu'est-ce qu'il fait Il travaille pour... C'est quoi C'est une banque C'est euh, une investment Il a une compagnie, euh, c'est un banquier, genre il, a, il aide les compagnies qui ont des problèmes financiers. And what, what kind of job uh, do you think he's going to offer you An analyst level job. I mean, if he does offer a job, I don't know. I mean, that's If he offered it to you, would you love to, to take it and stay here in Paris? I don't know, I have to see. It depends, I have to think about it. I have to think about it, eh? mm. even though you, we would love to have you here with us, you know? Yep. Yeah, because you don't have a job in New York anyway, so mm -hmm. at least you will have something here. Yeah. You have a busy day, it's nice to step away and take some putts. It's all about being relaxed. Oh, this is a mist for sure. Yeah. <laughs> See? Didn't even sniff it. <laughs> He's got a close up of your mullet right now, Lance. Yeah, he does. Lance, you pretty much suck at this thing. <laughs> <laughs> you had a great future as a putt and putt, dude. You'd be the ball guy. You got a good future as a caddy, son. <laughs> <laughs>